Well, today is the day. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and welcome to Surviving the Aftermath. After 11 updates and after a year of being exclusive to the Epic Games Store, this game now finally is available on Steam. And a lot of you told me that you weren't even going to play it or that you'd only consider it to be a new game when it finally came to Steam and had more updates to it. So consider this a first look at a new early access game that is released now on Steam for $24.99 single player survival city builder with many, 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 many updates behind it. Check out all the things that have come out since the original uh, expanded colony updates all the way through hostile world, law and order, things that added bandits, new buildings, new places to go, new things to find, and of course now finally quests and other things to do inside and outside of your colony. Well, let's go ahead and get started by building a new city here today. And if you want to see more or a full playthrough, finally, now that this game is much, much more complete, hopefully it's going to be quite some time until we see an update because each one of these updates also made you restart your city. And that's much, much farther behind us now that we are pretty much out of early access territory and approaching or full release for the game since it's been about a year. Forgive the background too, by the way, there seems to be something uh, on their end with the V-Sync being set up incorrectly. I tried to goof with it, but it just seems that the, uh, you know, the background splash image that loads or the uh, video, yeah, it seems to disappear. So I don't think you'll have any problems, but it looks pretty. You can see asteroids and meteorites and stuff flying down to Earth and fires and all sorts of different reasons why the Earth may have been destroyed. Whether it be nuclear or natural disaster, who knows. <laughs> wow, that's kind of uh, concerning to see an asteroid or a meteorite coming to Earth and then boom, screen goes black. All right, well, let's go ahead and start a new game. For those of you who've never seen this game before, again, consider this to be a survival city builder where everything is against you. Humanity is fighting, there's radiation, uh, there's magnetic storms, there's raiders, there's uh, people to trade with, and uh, you'll also have to kind of build an army a little bit through your specialists. If you want to pause at any time to read anything, go right ahead. I'll try to go slow. Uh, right here, we're going to set up our environment. So we're going to try to put things on easy again. This is the best way to see the most amount of things in the game, especially seeing what's new with updates with the shortest amount of time. So here, we're going to make it so that way our fertile soil is only at 40%, which seems like a lot, but sometimes even in this game on easy, it can be a little bit of a pain in the neck to find land to grow crops and whatnot. Let's go ahead and choose that. Uh, catastrophes, we're going to go ahead and put disasters on minimum, uh, even though they still come very frequently. Also, we're setting up the uh, contamination level for our area. We're basically trying to find a paradise, so we might want to set up our city to be that oasis that our group has been looking for. Our group has prepared well in advance, so luckily we're bringing plenty of supplies with us. We have a hardy survivalist ideology, so our people are willing and ready to fight, to defend, and to, uh, you know stand the time. This will give us additional uh, tech options for more efficient survival methods. Gatekeeper. We'll have ourselves, uh, you know, people coming to our camp and whatnot to join us later. And specialists. So you can see what their uh, speed is or what uh, they can do for uh, damage if they come to fight other characters. So it looks like this character will be good for a scout. As you can see, they also have uh, underneath their name uh, what they do. So there's some who are very good at gathering research points, some that are very good at fighting. Certainly a good idea to have a good fighter. Well, let's get, uh, let's see, I think we'll go with maybe, oh, I love Wheeler. Yeah, he's been in the game for quite some time. So let's go with Wheeler, and let's see if we can put another person in there too. Uh, let's see, Scavenger, Scout, we should probably have a fighter in here too. Let's go with the, uh, hmm. is there only one fighter? Oh yeah, Fritz, good. Excellent. So now we got a go good mix of three characters. We'll continue then. Now we can also design the uh, flag for our little uh, camp too. And let's see if our dinosaur is in here. It certainly is. Little other logos that you can go with if you want to. Just to kind of design your banner. It will appear on your camp. And of course this one's been in here for a long time. Kind of suspicious. Kind of sus. That they actually put that in there. I still like to think it's me. It could, it might not be. I don't. I still don't know. They've never told me. All right. Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. I hope you all are having a fantastic day, by the way. So thank you very much for joining me and just showing all that lovely support. You guys are the best. Let's go ahead and start with what we got here now and build our first survival city since the game has been released on Steam. Now, I'm hoping that I can actually make a more permanent city. Sometimes when we take a look at these updates, I don't plan to stay for very long since it's well known that you have to restart your city each time for these updates because they are major. They change the game in a very major way. Uh, so hopefully we don't have to do that, but we'll see. I love the art style on this game. It's just beautiful to see all the hand-painted 
everything. Like there's uh, portraits, everything either looks like it's painted or well designed by hand. All right. Well, welcome everybody to Surviving the Aftermath. Good to see you all here. Okay, so we've got ourselves a area here where we're going to build a gate eventually. And there's a long road that leads, if you can see it, back to like a tunnel or a bridge that can be easily defended. So back there, there's like a tunnel. And uh, so that allows us to build a gate and control who comes in and out of our colony. Right now, we've started with three of our scavengers or scouts or whatever you want to call them. And we'll go ahead and uh, start a new home. So what we're going to do now is we're going to build the campsite and then start our colony and recruit or rather call in our other people with a signal flare so that way they can join us. So basically, these three went ahead as our scouts, our expeditionary force, and they're going to build a little bit of a camp for everyone to gather at and then we're going to uh, tell everyone else that the coast is clear and that they can come join us. So let's do that then. We'll go ahead and start building some stuff here. Campsite. Go ahead and start that uh, probably right about maybe t closer to the entrance, maybe on this side. There we go. Now, before we uh, tell them to build, we can also lay things out. Oh, it looks like that auto builds. They don't let you... Uh, well, you used to actually have to build that. Now it auto builds. You used to have to tell your uh, colonists to go to build that. We'll start with a well as well, so that way we can get water. They made so many improvements. And, and ooh, Actually, we have a water source here. Might be a good idea to build both a well here and then also an external water source, like uh, something to go gather water from the pond. So a water collector we could build here too. And it doesn't actually overlap, I believe, because this is only gathering water from the uh, from the river. So let's go ahead and build a little water thing there. Eventually our people will need drinking water and they'll also need water uh, to work some of their equipment. So things like, for example, um, go ahead and build that. So things like, for example, um, cookhouses will need water in order to boil and make food, that type of thing. But water that the colonists need to drink will be different too. You've probably seen this game many and many times by now. But it is nice to see that it's finally new to Steam and that it's really starting to become like a full game that you can give a try. Ah, medical tents, always a good idea to build those. Let's get some emergency shelters up though. We need to call our people in. We need to get everybody working as soon as possible. I kind of like having the camp near the gate. It really looks like how a camp would be set up near its defenses like this. It makes a lot more sense to build your camp near the entrance rather than building it somewhere out, uh, for example, like out here. There's more things to find in the land and the world too. Let's take a look at the world map. So this is what surrounds us, some lush landscapes, but also uh, some deserts and some mountains, which, wow, giant volcano there, maybe? Oh, that's a good idea that we, yeah, that's great. Uh, areas like this will give us tech points, which we can use for research in a little while. We also have a farm here where we can get some prime meat, and then of course, a camping site, which will give us plastic, which we can use for building later. Go ahead and jump back inside. And let's see, how do we find our city? Is there a button to do that? I think there is like a hotkey to go back to the gate. Oh, there we go. Well, we found it now. Okay, let's speed up time a little bit so we can get more done. And uh, eventually we can signal uh, the others to come. We can shoot the flare. We can shoot the flare anytime and uh, tell our people to uh, come on to the camp. Let's go ahead and do that after our tents are complete. We'll go ahead and have these guys uh, get everything done here for building. There we go. So once the tents are up, we'll call everybody in. I've also noticed in this game that the metal piles aren't just like piles of cars and junk anymore. Sometimes you'll see like a large grain elevator made out of steel, or there could be other large things made out of concrete other than the typical art style we'd been seeing before. So if you're very familiar with this game, there's much that's new to it. Many new things with the new updates since we last covered it. And of course, it's now new to Steam with all sorts of different language support and also partial controller support, Steam achievements too, and uh, it's really good stuff. All right, let's finish the second camp and everybody should be able to come on in. I believe we start with 12 people, so uh, each of these holds six, right? So we'll need uh, homes for both of these. I don't think the specialists need homes, so we won't need to build another tent for them. So let's go ahead and shoot that flare. Give me ones down below in that comment section for the one flare we're about to shoot that's going to start this all, the big bang, if you will. And there she goes. All right. Our other allies know that they're clear to come in. The inhabitants. Prompted by the specialist signal flare, the rest of your group arrives at the 
prepared campsite. Despite all the hardship ahead, it's time to rebuild and turn this hostile place into a home. Absolutely. Wow. Flare looks really cool. Okay, now we have water. Uh, we should probably start storing some water, too, just in case. One of the first um, uh, real problems in this game for uh, survival is probably pandemics. Huh? And also, um, there we go. Uh, things like pandemics, droughts, and especially nuclear fallout can really set back your camp at the start. So it's a good idea to have water and medical tents ready to go as soon as possible. We'll go ahead and build a couple of those. I really wish this initial roadway would act as a road too. I never have a heart to build like a road on top of the road. You can build roads in this game for your people to follow and they'll uh, go much faster, of course. Uh, but I never, I never want to build there. I don't know why. I just want it to like look nice. It looks like a nice entrance to a survivor's camp. We'll go ahead and build a medical tent here. And probably another one next to it. And we'll tell our people to start gathering supplies. So under, uh, I believe this one here. Yeah, storage. Uh, we can put down a stockpile and we can tell our people to start gathering things like wood and concrete bricks so they can build additional buildings. So we'll go ahead and put some storage back here. There we go. And that'll, that'll, that'll have to be built, but it won't take too long for them to actually build that. Sometimes the stockpile gets full, so it's a good idea to build more than one of those. And we'll do that shortly. Alright, let's tell our people to start gathering stuff. If we hold control and use our mouse wheel, we can also change the size of the gathering area. Which is nice if you're trying to only gather a certain type of material. Oh wow, there's lots of stuff up here. Let's get started there. And then we'll clean more stuff out around our camp. Fantastic. Alright, so now we've got all these materials in the game too. Keep in mind that a lot of the basic materials are going to be used very quickly. So things like wood and concrete are used the fastest, followed by plastic and metal. And then fibers and parts, rare metals, components, and fun boxes are things that will come a little bit later. Components probably being the uh, most necessary for building electrical uh, components, things that produce electricity. One of their more recent updates, too, makes it so that way you need to build near transformers. And, of course, these are not all the buildings that are available in the game. We'll need to research some of those things, including that transformer, too. I think we will call it Optimus Prime. Let's go ahead and build ourselves a road now. We'll put a dirt road from the end of this roadway all the way to the back. Right there, and we'll continue to build along that. Good area over here for farm fields. We could definitely use this for farming. And what is that? Oh, it's a little mountain there, too. So, good area for farming. Probably up here, actually. Looks like there's a... Is that a river actually passing through? Oh, it's a edge of a pond. I thought there was perhaps a river, like, right here going down. Well, that's a great area to build farming. So, we'll keep all of the people here. And then everything close to the pond, we could actually have for farming. This is contamination here. We'll have to clean this up later. And we'll get to that very soon. But for now, let's go ahead and get on the, with the next step, which is basic production of food. So let's go ahead and get a... Uh, well, we already had a fishing hut down, didn't we? Did I select one? No. Not yet. We'll have to put one down. I was thinking of the water gatherer earlier. Ah, perfect. A fish farm right there. Build a little road that goes out to that. We'll build a trapper, which can gather meat from the forests. Go ahead and build that somewhere, uh, maybe closer to the fish farm. Maybe on this side. Oh, there's berries there. Okay, let's build it closer to the road. We can tell them to go uh, hunting somewhere nearby. Yeah, maybe over here for starters. We can always move the building. And it looks like one of our colonists has an issue. Visions of gloom. An older colonist claiming to bear grave news brought you uh, is brought to you. They are shaking and in clear dismay. I saw it. A bright wave of destruction. It'll hit tonight. You trying to be a ask for more guidance, but the colonist has already passed out from stress. It is up to you to decide how to react to the news. Yeah. So there'll be quests like this that come up with the uh, people who want things in order to possibly do experiments or whatnot. Uh, let's see. Fallout, fire, meteor, or ignore the warning. I think what will probably happen is perhaps a fire... So that might be a good idea. If we prepare for a meteor, we lose metals, and that's going to be a major setback. So let's prepare for a fire, and at least say that we prepared for something. Uh, let's see, you believe the vision was a warning of an upcoming torching with disastrous effects. So we've increased happiness because we tried to prepare. Cool. Happiness is something you definitely need to uh, be on the lookout for in this game. Uh, you'll need to give people better meals and better places to rest in order to 
give them more happiness, which I believe might actually affect their production, although I've never really been certain. I think the reason around happiness has changed a few times in the game. Let's see here. Oh, looks like we're actually storing water here, and I think we're full. Clean water storage good. Let's build another one of those if we can. Oh, it takes 10 plastics, so we won't be able to gather that for a bit. Unless we build one of these buildings, the scrapper and recycler, which allows us to take plastic and uh, metal and turn it into either scrap or plastic or fabric. That's going to be really important for us. So let's build that down here. Build ourselves a scrapper and a recycler, giving a little bit of extra room for buildings down here too. Let's build this one up here on this side. I'm going to try to, it looks kind of like we have a peninsula here in our city. So it looks like we got water on this side, water on that side, so we kind of have to build this way. Oh, wow, there's lots of water near us, actually. So we're going to get our city kind of scrunched up and really high density very soon. I like it. Very good stuff. Each map provides its own challenges, so if you have a typical way of building a city, you might want to reassess for different uh, things that you can do later. Okay, looks like we can do some trapping here. Let's try to get that work area efficiency up. Somewhere around 70% would be good. However, we don't want her to walk too far. So we could start with about 60... Almost 70%. That's not bad. Right there's a good start. And now we have our scrapper ready. So the scrapper again gathers metal. And of course we can set the work area to be quite large. Looks like we've started with metal here. And of course the great thing about putting this near the city is typically wherever you start your city... There's metal and other things nearby that are taking up valuable building space. So if you can gather those and then turn it into valuable uh, materials, then you won't have to uh, worry about having limited space anymore, and you can build where the items used to be, or the resources used to be. All right, one more building then. The Recycler. Now, let's take a look at jobs. Right now, as in the left corner, you can see that we have a population of 12. If nobody's assigned to a job, they become a carrier, which means that they bring stuff back and forth from a work site to a storage yard. Uh, there's also workers... Elders, adults, and children. I don't think elders and children work, so you'll have to continuously... Aging is a new thing in this game. Uh, there was always aging because kids could become adults, and there was a school that you could build. All right, I'm going to break my rule. <laughs> Says he won't build a road, actually builds the road. Wow. Uh, yes, so I think one thing you'll need to worry about is constantly making sure that you have more and more people uh, ready to go in your camp for working. So if you... Uh, have five adults and two children join the camp from uh, a group of settlers outside the map, then you'll just need to make sure that the uh, people who are too old uh, are replaced by children eventually. Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and build the gate now, which will give us access to the outside world. A lot of these materials will be delivered, and then eventually we'll be working on um, getting more people into the camp. The uh, people here, by the way, can also work... The specialist can work on gathering materials for you, basic stuff like food. Uh, we don't have a food storage up yet, so we're going to build that now that we've built our other buildings up here. So let's build ourselves a... Ah, uh, we have a, a lumber yard to build too. Put our food storage here. As soon as that road's done, it'll connect to it. And this will actually be a good building uh, to be near the farms and near the trapper and near the fisher. So it's a pretty good general area to be. Let's build a road now for that fishing hut, too. It's not going to be the most, you know, high-trafficked area. But we'll build something for it. Let's build it down here. We need to build a road to these little medical tents. So let's build something like this. It'll have to go through the berry bushes, it seems. So if we build it like this... Let's see. Kind of hard to see in there. Look at the great detail in this game. I love it. Now that'll be fine. That leads to the little water gathering station, and this leads to the fishing dock. Perfect. All right. Looks like we're ready to go with the recycler, which will gather plastic. And there's a big old pile nearby. Beautiful. And there's another one over there, too. Perfect. All right, now our specialists are bringing materials back and forth as well. It'd be kind of nice if you could set them to certain jobs. They kind of wander around until you auto-assign them, but it'd be nice if you could kind of tell them, hey, if you're not doing anything, become a carrier, or if you're not doing anything, uh, go work on cutting down trees or something like that, or building, 
that type of thing. Okay, well, we've got ourselves quite a bit going on. We've got food coming in. We can eventually make these uh, food... All, all the food that we gather will have to be into higher quality meals. So, for example, um, if we were to gather, let's say, fish, berries, and also we were harvesting corn, we could build a cooking hut to make that into a much higher quality meal for people. Otherwise, they're just like eating raw corn and... That's great, but will get boring eventually, and there's many different meals that could be made out of that to add variety and get better nutrients out of that since the uh, cooker can cook things a lot better. Let's go ahead and start on building uh, something else now. Let's see, we have ourselves a fishing hut. Mm, clean water storage. Lumber yard, that's going to be useful. That actually makes wood for us, and that'll clear out areas around the uh, little pond here so that way we could start farming. That's going to be useful. Let's go ahead and build that next to the trapper. Unfortunately, we're going to work kind of in a counterproductive method. The trapper needs woods in order to gather meat, and we're going to go ahead and uh, pretty much cut down some of those trees and move our trapper somewhere else. I've also noticed that we haven't explored the whole city, too. It looks like that's a new thing now. As you can see, all around us is areas that are unexplored. Out there could be giant radioactive bugs or something uh, to attack our colonists, so we have to protect them with the scavengers or the specialists. And we can also build guard posts and such, too, so that way they don't walk into our territory. We're going to go explore a little bit more and see what's out there for us. Ah, perfect. Another metal scrap pile. So we got plenty of resources near us. We got lucky with that. Looks like deposits are being depleted, but that just is for wood and concrete. So luckily we're building ourselves the logging camp. All right, very good. Fritz is doing a good job of looking around the city. Don't see any creatures. Oh, there's a majestic deer. So we can actually shoot those and go hunting, too, if we want to, for some extra food. That's a really nice thing at the start. Instead of having to build a building, you can just send one guy out with a rifle to go shoot and kill a deer and bring back all the meat. And boom, you got venison. for what That could feed 12 people for a very little, little amount of time. But definitely one or two extra days of food uh, would be a great asset to our colony, for sure. All right, we got somebody who's infected here, so they go, boom, right into the medical tent, and he's taken care of. We're actually going to get rid of one of those people working at the medical tents for now, so we have an extra free hand to work on lumber, uh, lumber mill. It looks like we now have a food storage building up. So all of our food will be stored there now, and if anybody ever is not, doesn't have a job or whatnot, they'll go and gather stuff. Now, I think infections can happen at random, but also if your colonists are working in highly contaminated areas, for example, gathering berries up here, It'll be bad times for them, so be cautious about that. All right, the wall, the gate is almost complete. The gate can be upgraded several times, so that's a good thing. And we also got plenty of plastic coming in now. Uh, everything's going to either be diverted to the lumber yard or the gate, and I think we are going to make the gate a much higher priority since that'll bring us more workers, and more workers means more people to help us defend the colony and to do all these other jobs that only... Uh, you know, 12 people can't take care of everything, so we need more. Yeah, essentially, once you reach about 100 population in this game, the game becomes a lot easier, at least it had been in the past, because you have so many people to do so many different jobs. Things that need to be done are done quickly, and that saves a lot of time, which then saves a lot of angst in order to uh, make you prepare and plan a little more effectively. So that way, if you need uh, 100 iron, you can get that iron quickly. All right. Looks like plastic and such is coming in. The night of day four. Music's good, too. There's a few different radio stations that you can uh, pick from. This one seems to be the most... Um, I, I like this one the most. It seems to be the most realistic for the feeling of the game, the immersion, making you feel like you're really in the fight here. All right, let's see. We also have medicine in this game and iodine pills. Medicine is to cure infections. Iodine pills are for radiation poisoning, and I believe there's a few other things you can get, too. Congratulations! You've rebuilt the gate and gained access to the world map. Yes, so now we can actually have, uh, well, a couple of good things happen and one bad thing happens. Uh, people can now raid our camp and attack us to try to take our supplies and stuff from us, but we can defend ourselves by putting more people on the gate for defense. Unfortunately, we only have one. But another good piece of news is that people can actually come to the gate so as you can see, a few people came out of the tunnel. Looks like they're wounded, but they definitely want in. So that's cool. 
So let's go ahead and let them in. Survivors are seeking shelter. Cool. If we accept, we get another fighter named Panda, and he's more than willing to us help us succeed. One adult, one elder, and one child. Well, not so great for the whole workforce I was hoping for, but they will bring tools and supplies. So let's go ahead and accept that. And wow, the gate actually has a whole sound and animation for opening up. That's impressive. Okay. We need more shelter then for our people. We're going to uh, build another emergency tent, I think. It just allows us to store the most amount of uh, people in a s small area. You know what we could do is each one of these houses we can also decorate as well. If we build it away from the path, we could put down decorations in this game, and decorations actually improve people's happiness. And that's something that's really important. Okay, let's go ahead and put down a few paths. Yeah, we can decorate all along the path. Now, not most ideal living in a little tent like this, but a little bit better than running from radioactive bears, wouldn't you say? I, I wouldn't want to do that. Now we can explore the world map. Let's get to it. So now we can send out our specialists to the world, and then we can go to things like this uh, museum, camping site to get plastic, and the farm too. And we can explore areas around us which might have perhaps a mine or a uh, plane crash or something to get metal. Or maybe there's other uh, cities out there that we can trade with. So it's a good idea to send them out. We don't have to have anybody uh, waiting at our camp. We could have them as defenders, though, but I think it'd be a good idea to send everybody out. So let's go ahead and send them to the world map. We'll tell all four of them to go. There we go. All right, so all four of our specialists are heading to the world map, and we'll have them go out and explore and gather materials and bring things back. That's going to be awesome. We'll wait till the last one gets out there. Now, this gate, as I mentioned, uh, can be upgraded, too. So, eventually, we'll get a much bigger gate that can survive much more attacks. All right. Our fighters will send out as scouts, ironically, for now. And they'll go check out what's near us. Ah, perfect. There's actually a bandit lair here. If we destroy the bandit lair, if we kill the bandits and clear out their lair, it might reveal more things on the map for us. So, it's a good idea to do that. So, let's go ahead and have Wheeler. I believe he's our scavenger. Let's go ahead and have him grab the plastic. And I love how they all have different uh, outfits and uh, like weapons and stuff on them. They're all a little bit custom when they go out. It's really cool. It looks like uh, Wheeler actually grabbed uh, some coins for us, which is new to the game too as of a couple of updates ago. Uh, silver trading coins, the old world. Yeah, so if you trade silver coins, uh, you can actually trade those for uh, goods. All right, let's send our scout out too. And I think we have a scientist, too. I thought we had a scientist. Let's see, we have a fighter, a scavenger, and a scout. Ah, yes, that's the fourth type. So scavenger, fighter, scout, and scientist. Very good idea to have a scientist eventually. They can gather more science per move. When you go to the uh, actual uh, museum. Perhaps sometimes there's a nuclear power plant. Lots of stuff to go explore. All right, we have a few people homeless. That'll be solved as soon as that's built. So not even a week has passed, and we're now exploring the world around us. Within five days, we have shelter for almost everyone. We've got people coming into the colony. We've got basic food production going on, berries, fish, and uh, animal meat. And uh, pretty soon we can start some farming. The only thing setting us back right now is the fact that we don't have uh, more people in the camp. So we'll eventually get some more by just having our camp open for business. Let's see. Maybe more clean water storage would be a good idea. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of plastic for that. And I don't think there's any jobs that we don't need to do at the moment. We can always turn off the uh, medical tents if we're not using them. Looks like everybody's ready to explore on the world map. Let's send our fighter out to go kick butt at the bandit lair. Nope. Oh. Missed the animation there. Uh, looks like he fist... I think they just like fist fight. There's 72 wood at the bandit lair, though. That could be a huge resource plus for us. Plus, he can bring back plastic, too. So it looks like we have two resources of plastic coming in. We desperately need wood, which is why we built that logging camp. So let's go ahead and set that up, too. Uh, let's go ahead and tell our people to gather from here. And as for the logging camp, the lumber yard, let's go ahead and start cutting down wood around uh, maybe up here. Where are we going to do some farming. Yeah, this would be a great area. We'll start there. That person has a risk of being contaminated, but 
we will work on using those resources to build decontamination stations, and that'll help us a little bit more later on. It looks like he has three moves. Oh, he can he can move again. Oh my goodness, they shoot now. Beautiful. Oh, good, and he's actually cleared out. Wow, people can make multiple moves now. They've changed all that. Fantastic. Good, I didn't know I could make more moves. Yeah, there's an update here too, so every t no matter whether or not you played this game from day one or whether or not you played from the last update, there's plenty to learn, so that's a really good thing in this game. And I'm really happy that there's new updates, that it's new to Steam, and that there's new things to build. Everything's new! That's right, I love it. I, I can't complain. I love building games, and I really want more building games, too. Eventually, we can have diplomacy in this game, too, through other societies. Once we find other societies by exploring the world map, we can trade with them, too. And I think we can also do quests or little jobs for them if, if they, for example, want a certain material. I think if we deliver that, we get a bonus for that, too, so that's a good thing. We're low on plastic. Has our plastic person found anything? Well, that plastic job takes a long time, doesn't it? We could build another uh, plastic recycler. Let's see what we can do here. Yep, that seems like a good call. Let's build another one of those. Eventually, through research, we should be able to unlock additional um, work slots in some of these buildings. So actually, now that we've got our first research, let's get started. Production speed for the trapper and the fishing uh, hut is increased by 20%. That's a good way to start. Let's do it. They've also updated this too. They have an updated uh, research thing. I prefer... I miss the old... Uh, the old look of it, but this is good though. It shows you whether or not they're decorations, durability, building, ideology stuff. And I think you can also filter, so that's helpful. Can we queue? Ah, it doesn't look like we can queue yet, darn. Well, we can unlock basic farming today. That's gonna be good. So we can start farming. I don't think we have enough people to really do that. We only need one person to do it, but we might want to have them on a different job, like for example, gathering plastic. However, if our uh, colonists come back, our Explorers out there come back with materials. We are going to be fantastic with supplies. We're going to be we're going to be squared away with all that plastic out there. It's darn near like a hundred plastic, so that's going to be great. Ah, we have a van man heist. What's going on here? Van man heist. Dan, the mystery van man, is a bit of a local celebrity in these parts in the wasteland. This is new, by the way. These new quests. Uh, he's also the mastermind behind several heists varying success, and now he approaches you in joining a new endeavor. And it's enterprising individuals such as yourself can surely assemble the crew in no time. I've already found the right people in the perfect vault to crack open. How about it? Oh, okay, so long as we're not robbing anybody uh, that might affect us negatively, we're just basically going and raiding a vault where supplies are, but nobody knew about it. Okay, let's assemble a crew. How do we do that? Assemble the crew. Don't know exactly what that means, though. Recruit the wheelman. I don't know exactly how to do that. We'll have to learn over time on that one. Maybe we might have to bring somebody back. Or maybe there's somewhere on the map we have to go. Ah, that's exactly it. Perfect. Let's go over here. Okay, so in the next turn, we should be able to explain the... Ah, oh, there it is. Explain the plan. The first member of your team is a burglar... Uh, is of considerable talent of old high-rise... What? He's living in a high-rise home for several seedy individuals, but you're here for just the one Dan mentioned. Walking around a crumbling apartment building, you hear a voice from behind you. So what's all this fuss about? A hooded figure asks... She stands about arm's length away from your back with a nasty dagger in hand. Oh, you're Dan's crew. Yeah, we can talk then. So what's it all about? Explain the plan. She listens as you explain the plan. Okay, uh, let's see. You know I got a guy who would be perfect for this kind of job. Think it's a sack of bricks, but terrifying if you're in his way. I agree to check it out. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So we basically just have to go to locations on the world map, and the payoff could be big if we do this. So that really makes the uh, scavengers have a lot more to do. So we got 49 plastic here, plus another 46 plastic there. Wow, we got almost 100 plastic out there waiting for us. Let's send um, Wheeler back. And Wheeler will bring all that plastic back to camp. And is there any other moves to make? Nope, but you can see it all up there. That's really nice that they put that up top. And uh, Wheeler will drop off the supplies. I'm hoping. There it is. 34, 46, 47. Nice. 
All right, we'll send it back to the world map. Now we have tons of stuff to build with. Great. All right, there's somebody nearby. Ah, she marked him over there. Okay. Let's go ahead and have Panda go over there. Ah, there's also metal over here, too. Well, Wheeler, guess who's coming over here? We're going to grab you some metal now. Fantastic. Good. Big stuff. Oh, I love that. You can actually move one more time. They used to expend all of their movement points when you would scout out an area, so that's that's a big improvement. We don't necessarily need so much food at the moment. I think we're okay. Let's keep exploring. We'll come back later. Oh, wait. There's maybe several points we have to check. Is there any other marked spots? Hmm. I don't see anything else. Yeah, this guy can now make five more moves. Let's get down here then. Good. Okay, back to the camp. Wow, the overworld map now seems much, much... that The fact that they added those quests is big. That is cool. Because before it was just basically you'd get a ton. You'd get like up to ten specialists. And after a while, they would run out of places to go or things to do because you'd gather all the supplies. And once you set up trading routes, it's automatic. So the specialists don't really have much to do towards the end game. But now there could be end game heists, which could really bring in a huge amount of difference. And I like that. I wonder if the water post has anybody working at it. It does. Plus 14 water here, and we also built a little well. Now, the reason we have the well, too, in addition to this, is if a drought hits, I believe wells are unaffected. They might be slightly affected, but I think they can still gather water, so that's important. Just maybe less of it during a drought. Okay, let's head to this city here. We'll bypass all the materials, and let's do this quest. it would be a big payoff. Van Man Heist. The person you're looking for isn't hard to find. A hulking bearded man. Okay. Uh, let's see. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. I see you've already met my sister. I hope she didn't portray me inaccurately. Oh, that's his sister. Very nice. Okay, well, let's recruit him. Uh, now we have to go down here, I think, for the second part of the quest. Maybe he needs something from down there. I would read, but again, we're in a hurry to try to see as much as we can in a very short time. Since this is episode one, a lot of people want to see more of the what the game has to offer. But we can slow down and go into much more detail. Again, if you want to see more, just let me know for all your support. I would love to do a full series on this game now that it, it feels like this game has been fully released. It is still an early access game, but the fact that it's new to Steam and has been out for a year really solidifies, honestly... If you were not into the game before, you didn't get it because it was on Epic Game Store, and you were waiting until now, now really is the time. There's a lot, so much has changed. This is so much better of a game than it was. It was a, it was a good game to start, and the updates made it better, but these quests and reworking of the electricity system and all the different things that you can build now, plus the tech tree, which by the way, we probably need to research something new, is really big. It's good stuff. I'm overwhelmed with all the new things to do here today, so... I'm really excited to see what we can do and where we can go. This is great. All right, how are we doing on supplies? Good, we got more than enough to build everything finally. Let's see, what else should we do? Well, we probably want to work on research next. And that's uh, almost done. Researching basic farming is almost complete. Okay, our people are ready to move again. Wheeler has a research site or more plastic to go to. Let's go grab the plastic. Go grab plastic. Grab the metal from here. A little bit of a hazard risk going in there. Yep. That explosion means that he took a little bit of damage. Not too much, though. Um, that could mean that there was like a, there was an accident, like they fell on something, or there was a buoy trap, or they had to fight other scavengers or something to go in there. All good stuff. Uh, a little bit of a risk to go here for concrete bricks, but we can always bring our scout back. So let's go here. And then go get the wood, and we'll gather all the basic building materials. This seems like a good idea. Same thing here, a little bit of damage. But we'll go over to this log cabin here, and then we'll go on to the next thing. Alright, we'll make our move then to check out what the heist has next. And then we'll bring all of our scouts in the eastern, southeastern side back with all the materials that they have. Sometimes I like to kind of go out further to see what's beyond and then bring back all the supplies once I know what's out there. So sometimes it's a good idea to scout past the things, grab what you need on the way back. All right, let's see. Still building stuff. It's now been a week. Seven days have passed. Everybody's doing a great job. 
Let's make sure all of our supplies are being appropriately gathered. Yep, there's still supplies coming in. What about berries? Yep, berries are still being gathered. Good. Logging site, still cutting down trees. And specialists are ready to go. Or one of them is. Alright, Wheeler's going to go grab some more materials. Uh, Belinda says you can't stop progress. Okay, I guess she's quite happy. Let's see, we could build a forester building too. The problem now is a lack of workers. So let's build one more emergency shelter, and after this, we'll have to start researching better homes. And gardens too. Farming is now complete, so let's go ahead and build something new there. Uh, let's go under colony. Heavy tarps, this will increase the durability of some of our homes. Ah, nurses will also allow us to have more work slots at the medical facilities. So that's a good idea. Then eventually this allows us to work on better homes. So let's go with this. Let's go with the nurses first, just in case some big uh, disaster hits. And we can only research one thing at a time. So research is quite slow in this game. It does take quite some time uh, to research everything there is in the game. And, of course, sometimes you don't have to research everything, too. Sometimes, for example, you can choose between wind or solar energy or both. And so long as you provide enough uh, energy to the batteries, it'll work overnight, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Traditions of love. Let's see. Roasted wild boar. Pendant made of toenails. Gross. Um, crown of wildflowers, please. I don't know. All right. Specialists are ready for action. Okay, let's go on to the log cabin and let's figure out the last of this quest. Uh, you hear the roar of the engine, the smell of almost suffocating amount of burning diesel fuel. On a small clearing, a man is tinkering with a large engine he clearly built himself. It belches smoke into the air like an industrial chimney and sounds like it's about to implode. I thought you guys were coming. Quickly hop into my carriage and let's roll. Before you get a chance to introduce the plan, the wheelman hops inside the heavily constructed 4x4 truck. Pops a classic 70s disco track into the cassette player, and the heist is about to go down. Get in the truck. Your crew arrives at the edge of town. An old neoclassical bank building uh, looks over the main street. Three armed thugs are guarding the main entrance, which itself seems to be open. According to Dan the Van Man's grand plan, well, <laughs> you can take a more frontal approach or try to get in through a locked door on the side. Let's try the side door. The wheelman stays behind in guard. Three of you head to the lock side of the door, which pops open quickly in the burglar's deft fingers. The lone sleepy guard finds himself in an escapable bear hug and passes out. Moving silently in the bank, you grab the manager and force him to open the vault door. What awaits you isn't the mother load you were expecting, but a sizable haul of silver and other goods nonetheless. What? We're actually like doing a real bank? But society's collapsed. That's weird. Head out. With the manager still as hostage, you head out towards your getaway vehicle, arriving at the truck. Your captive starts to chuckle with the wheelman following suit. I think we can end this charade now. I'm impressed. The manager laughs, removing the fake beard and sunglasses and a rather convincing prosthetic nose. It's Dan the Van Man. Consider your trial over. You can keep what you found as payment up front for the future heist. Keep in touch. And with that, Dan the Wheelman and siblings climb in the truck and speed off. What? That was just a test? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. Uh, we got 50 candy bars, 30 iodine pills, and 500 coins. All right, well, that was certainly worth it. And the city collapsed. Okay. Well, that's cool. All right, those quests are kind of cool. So you'll be able to choose. So I'm assuming that there'll be side things that you can do. Like, for example, when we recruited uh, the, the thief, that type of thing. So if you recruit more people or if you get all the necessary supplies, it makes the quest easier and gives you more options to complete in the future. There'll be many more quests with probably different things that you can earn and probably things that you can do to fail and possibly have people die if you don't make the right decisions. That could be definitely something waiting for us. We do have farms unlocked now. I do want a good spot to build a farm. Uh, looks like we're still cutting down trees, though. So if this area gets more cleared out, this would be perfect to build it right here. And we'll also have to harvest these berries, too. Let's go ahead and work on clearing out stuff over this way instead. Just so we can get all of our area clear for farming. Farming, of course, the best part about it is that it provides us a variety of food. Not that it provides a constant large amount of food, but 
if you get enough going in the game, you can get soybeans and corn and also, um, I think you can get like green peppers or something like, I can't remember. There's many different things you can grow. Maybe pumpkins, maybe I'm thinking of banished, but there's many crops to grow, including wheat and getting bread is basically GG for food. Once you get bread unlocked, you get an incredible amount of food and it's very, very useful. All right, let's get everybody grabbing supplies again. Let's go for uh, the research. No boom. Let's go for, let's see, bring you back, we'll, we'll head back home. Looks like uh, Panda's got the 33 metal for us too. Let's grab some more canned food. And there's jerky up here too. So we won't have to worry about food for a while. Panda taking a little bit more damage, but he can stand. Withstand to the Panda. And let's bring these guys back too. So scouts are on the way back home. Perfect. One more move tomorrow and everyone should be back. Excellent. Hey, we finally figured it out. Ah, that's what pops up whenever there's research complete. I see. Okay, let's also go for, uh, let's see, medical training. We could increase healing speed. I think that would probably be a very good initial thing for us. We want to try to keep people alive and do so quickly. You can get easily overwhelmed if, if a fallout storm hits or if there's, uh, what's the other bad one? Fallout is pretty bad, but also, actually, I, I honestly think that might be the worst one because the effects of fallout don't happen really during it. It's more afterwards that your medical system, after a long time of radiation fallout, a radioactive fallout, people then pile into the medical center. Ah, and there it is, our first one, a pandemic. Let's see, it comes in waves infecting colonists. Untreated colonists will die eventually. Disease dehydrates, increasing water consumption. Build enough medical facilities to treat them. Antibiotics speed up healing process, so you don't necessarily need those things, but they do help. Unlock and build saunas to reduce the amount of sick colonists. Okay, so let's go ahead and get ready for a pandemic incoming. I don't know if it's now or not. Oh, yep, looks like it's... Yep, looks like they need saunas in order to do that. We don't, unfortunately, have that unlocked. That's more of a kind of an end game thing. I think these people want showers, so their hygiene is not so great. Speaking of hygiene, let's also work on... Let's see if we can put down a toilet somewhere. There it is, an outhouse. If we put an outhouse over here, we might be able to get people... Um, let's see, let's go ahead and put that uh, probably over... Oh boy, I don't want them getting sick if they go over here. But let's put this in the corner. And these areas get uh, contaminated too. It creates contamination. We'll make two of those to start with. And I don't think we can put down showers yet, only a burial pit. So we'll get on that eventually. Ah, oh, we can get the small field though. But we'll wait until this area is more clear. Food is not really a uh, large concern at the moment. Alright, Kim is infected. So now we have space for four sick people. And we just finished research on faster medical training, so that's great. So we made some really good decisions there at the start. Uh, let's go for... What, what can we go for? Is there a way for saunas? Where would that be? Uh, could be around here somewhere. There's a lot to look at. It's probably not... It's probably under uh, colony. Nothing, nothing else. Well, let's work on food, too. I also would like to uh, increase... Some other stuff here. Increased uh, storage capacity for food might be a good idea. And then eventually to make food uh, from the cooking areas. We'll unlock the cookhouses for more advanced meals. Feeling fresh as a daisy. Alright, some people are actually able to take mm -hmm. care of themselves. Contamination is at 72 out of 100, so we're going to need to worry about that next. That's going to be our next major project. Let's go back to the world map. It looks like... Are two of our colonists back? Uh, these guys are going to heal up slowly since they're back. Let's wait for the pandemic to pass, right? Together? <laughs> Things will be fine. Let's see what happens. And we'll call it a day. So these uh, showering... Th this isn't related to the pandemic. It's related to us having to build something in the research area. I'll have to take a look and see where that is, actually. But I'll find that for next time. That'll be an easy one to research and build. We'll also need to store water for that, so a good idea for us to store more water. Now, as you can see, the water consumption increased to 22, so it's great that we have the extra stuff ready for that. Let's go for another water well. 
It's hard to tell where the water is not going to be contaminated from. Uh, I would like to build another water collector, but that takes another employee. Water numbers are decreasing, but you can see we had about 900 in storage, so we'll be okay. Let's go for... There's contamination pretty much everywhere. Well, let's worry about efficiency. Let's build it up here. Now, as you can see on the ground, there's rats and stuff that are running around. And there's like puffs of uh, green sickness and whatnot. So it's all something you have to kind of monitor. But there's not much you can do about it aside from having your medical tents ready to go. All right, let's go this way. And another bandit camp. Boy, they're really asking me how I rate the game. <laughs> they really want me to know that they care. They do. They truly do. All right, we got lots of plastic. Uh, let's see. Wheeler's a scavenger, though, so let's try to go maybe... Oh, there's a large lake here. Ah, let's go grab that food instead. There we go. All right. Let's see how things go today. Group of survivors are at the gate. Oh, I missed that. They they did uh, they left. Well, maybe now is not a good time with a giant pandemic going on. Okay, seriously, I'm so distracted by all these other <laughs> these other little questions coming in. They want a lot of feedback from you. Luckily, uh, survivors coming to the gate is quite common, so it's not that big of a deal. All right, very good. The three colonists are infected. We're gonna, we're gonna lock down. We're under quarantine right now. People wanted to join our camp. We're we're under a quarantine. <laughs> We've got a pandemic. You people don't want to come in here. Eventually, we will use the extra people who come to our camp though to build uh, farms, and build them much bigger. Everyone should be able to survive this though. We've only got three people inside the uh, tents right now. It's not too bad. Colonist request. Uh, they want to go out on a hunt. Sure, go for it. Plus 20 food. There they go. Some of them come back more, yeah, infected, so... We'll worry about that then. Okay, so we've got a little bit more space there. They'll... It's kind of weird. Sometimes people will be infected and they don't immediately go to the doctor. They, uh, kind of wait a little bit before they go to the tent. Alright, this is going to take a while to pass, I think. Good, we went from th uh, five down to three. Let's see if we can survive this. Also, let's see... Yeah, the last thing we also wanted to during the pandemic was more water consumption. We certainly didn't want any more people in the in the camp during that. Good idea not to take anybody on if you're going through the uh, fallout or whatnot, because you'll eventually have to heal them. Not to mention, new colonists who come to your camp might also be wounded. They might be irradiated, they might be uh, sick could spread that sickness, so last thing we needed was more trouble. Build a few tents now, upgrading the quality of our camp. All right, next time people come to the gate, we will let them in. Next time we will start on farming, and next time we will start doing some more advanced research in order to build ourselves some wonderful cookhouses and such. This will be very important for us to make sure we have enough food in the future. All right, you guys have been amazing. Thank you very much for all your support. Thank you for leaving a like on the way out, and I hope to see you tomorrow. You guys have been awesome, so thank you very much for joining me. We'll get some more basic research done, and I'll see you all next time in Surviving the Aftermath. New to Steam, 11th update out, pretty much a full, complete game, although it's still in early access. I'd say this feels like a damn complete game, and it's great. So if you haven't heard about it, grab it. It's good. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone, and have a great day.